Hey guys, this is Leon Fresh. Welcome to a tutorial about cards and how to make a good architecture for them. So basically, I'm going to walk through what I did here. And this is my little game, so I can make a little ship here. And when I get to build mode, then I can start, you know, clicking on the squares and clicking on which tyrant I want so if I click as you see it's uh, spawning the buildings and it's the cards aren't getting duplicated so systems all working apparently So yeah, let me show you how I did this exactly, in terms of the card system. I won't go too much in depth about this. Uh, so basically, I just did like a scroll view. So you can create a scroll view uh, with a panel, so UI scroll view. And this is good for containing cards. So once you got that, make sure to get rid of the movement on it so make it um, clamped and then um, get rid of the scroll bars and disable them as well and also you want to like in the content game object here you want to add a horizontal layout group and with these settings uh, then you can actually like create a card in it so UI create panel or a button so I think I'll go with a button and then you just do like put it to the left and then uh, you just adjust this to the height that you want in my case I wanted something around here and I wanted uh, to make it a bit fancier so I added this really cool shape script which is a package of a unity store if you search shape 2d and this allows you to create really cool shapes on the fly so it's like procedural generation of uh, 2d shapes and you can have a border on it and everything so you can just do like something like this and give an outline as well see so this is very cool, very handy tool to prototype indeed. And um, with the text, I obviously removed the default text and I added a text mesh pro to that. So UI text mesh pro, which is a lot more clearer, as you see. And let's see, that's basically how I did the UI setup. So I won't go too much in depth. And this card system is I mean I made this card into a prefab so I dragged it here as well so you see I've got the shapes here and then I got I made a new script for card handler and I'll just bring it up so this card handler has a property for for the card name and it's going to set the text mesh pro which it uh, references to the same value so when you change this card name it's gonna change the text along with it which is pretty handy so I did it that way and it's got a it's got an on-click handler because with the unity button system you can't really have you know it doesn't really work too well with a prefab so that's why I implemented I pointer down handler and then when it's clicked I call my instance for build manager and I tell it to spawn building with the car name and if you go to my building manager it's just using um, network instantiate uh, if you don't have this like you just use the normal instantiate and it, it won't be a string it'll be like the prefab obviously so then let's have a look what exactly I did here So this is just uh, to prevent the duplicates, so I have a hand pretty much, I'll go through that later 
uh, so you don't have to worry about this for now. And this is destroying the cart, so we don't want it anymore. Alright, so that's like the pretty much how it's like basically tied in to the UI system. And apart from that, we just have a deck manager with these settings, so um, I'll walk through that now. So if we have a look at the deck manager, we got a list of cards for the original deck list and then we got a stack of cards for the deck so you know how a stack is like like a real stack of cards so it gets it from the top of a deck uh, from a pile so this is this collection is very useful for that and then we have a list of your your hand so we don't really need a stack for this because we want to actually manipulate this uh, a bit more than just the pop um, how it like you know how it gets the data so we want it to be a bit more versatile and this is your reference to the deck panel which is the content here so you want to add, add things into this one and set it as a parent basically now back to this the logic is pretty simple when it's awake of the manager we want it to reset the deck so reset the deck means that we want to shuffle the original list so we want to shuffle the original deck list and this is an extension method that I wrote and we can have a look at this now so this is based off an algorithm called Fisher Yates shuffle and which is very suited to cards so we do like this shuffle for the deck it's a generic extension so of a list type so we have a new random and then we basically have this algorithm here and it's going to shuffle our list to this algorithm that we see here based off this looping path right so that's how this works and then for for that after that after we got the like original deck shuffled which by the way is listed in the inspector this is um, a listing in, in, in the inspector. Yeah, so we, and we populate this list by using scriptable objects, by the way. And let's have a look at that now. So I have a serializable scriptable object, and I'm using this one to put into these cards basically. And I have a database here as well with where I created these scriptable objects. So if I just go right click create card, I am able to fill these out. And it's using a prefab for the card that I've created here as well, which I just showed you. So you just you just link the card and then you just give it a name and then give it a color as well. So once we have that Yeah, we can um, we can get everything in the original deck list of cards uh, that we have in the inspector. So in this case, we've got five of those in the inspector, and we add those to the current deck by pushing it in. And then, if you look at an update, like if we if we don't have you know if our child count is less than four then we're going to deal the cards. So deal the cards means that if um, if your deck count is less than zero, so that means if you don't have any cards in, in the deck anymore, then we're going to reset the deck, which means going back to the original logic to shuffle and add it to the deck. But if you have more than that, which is more often the case, like for example, you know, uh, you 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 would start off with five cards in this case. So in this case, you're gonna instantiate the scriptable object from the deck. So this actually pop removes it from a deck, which is why we need to you know reset it when it goes to zero again. So this is actually a scriptable object of card that we're instantiating, but it's not gonna do anything because we haven't instantiated it. It's just the 
a card reference of the scriptable object and we're gonna prevent the duplicate of cards by asking you know if it's in our hand and with the same check the name of it and if we have the same kind of name of the card then we obviously return it so and we add this to the hand this whole hand thing for now is just to prevent duplicates so for example if we don't have this uh, I'll just show you what happens Gotta connect to the network first. As you see, very quickly we're starting to get duplicates. See, a lot of duplicates. There you go. There was three duplicates there. So this line is to prevent duplicates. And this whole hand thing is just to prevent duplicates. Just saying we're gonna add it to our hands if we have it. And we're gonna in our in our card handler when you click this is going to remove the card from our all this is just to remove the card from our hand once we clicked on the card basically and let's go back to the card uh, the deck manager so we instantiate the prefab of a new card and then we set the parent to the new card um, by the way, this instantiate of this card is to make a clone of a scriptable object. If you don't do this, you're going to directly modify the values of a scriptable object and that's not a good idea. So you, it's a good idea to instantiate it. And then um, you set the parent to the deck panel, obviously, and then just make sure it's like the scale that I want. And then this card handler, we want to get the card handler component. And then we set the card name, which is going to also change the TextMesh Pro's text as well. And then we change the color to the scriptable objects color as well. So we, we're setting this these scriptable objects properties like as after we instantiated it, because this way we can like instead of using a lot of different prefabs, we can just use one prefab and just dynamically change the text inside of it using the script of object so it's way better to just use one prefab if all your stuff are the same you don't want to have like tons of prefabs you know for no good reason all right so that's the whole logic uh let me know if you have any questions or anything uh let me know put a comment or whatever or message me but apart from that guys that's all for the tutorial for now like walkthrough so I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something. Peace out guys.